Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Get Better. This is my PvP walkthrough analysis series where I take PvP situations that I get myself into in DayZ and I break them down for you. We'll break down my decision making process, uh, all the things that I do well, all the things that I do bad, all for your benefit. You know, PvP in DayZ is hard, so I'm here to break down these situations and help you learn a thing or two uh, to get you ready for your next PvP engagement. And guys, if you do find these videos to be helpful, I encourage you to leave a like and a comment on the video. It does really help the channel grow and bring more people to it. So if you think that this is helpful for you and you think maybe it would help other people get better at PvP too, uh, doing something as simple as liking and commenting on the video goes a very long way. Also subscribe. All right, let's jump into it. All right, so for some context, I'm playing with Doc again. Uh, we're doing on a Winter Trinara server, so it's... Essentially, it's the same Trinaris map as you would see unofficial, it just has a, a winter mod that makes it cold and survival is a bit harder. So with the winter mod, cold plays a big factor. Aside from that, Doc and I are here in Severograd. We're just looting around. He's looting the fire station for NBC gear that we're collecting. And suddenly, Doc gets shot at. Lupatino has shot on me. Where, from where, the where? Hill. Um, I'm in the double green and the shot came pretty much from the hill, which is uh, like where the gas station is, up there. So the shot is suppressed. I don't hear it, so I don't really know where the shot comes from. Uh, Doc tries to communicate to me. He tells me it's above the hill line on the gas station side. Uh, for some reason, I'm confused and I, I don't really know what he means. I don't know. That's just me being dumb in the moment. But anyway, I push into the, the house that I think that Doc is in. He just miscoms uh, which double house it is. There's two right next to each other. Not a big deal. So Doc gets shot at, then assesses, I don't have the best of eyes. He already knows why I'm at here. I'm going to switch houses to something that has a little bit better of a view of the area that I got shot from. And so he pushes across the street. There's a house, a double blue door house that is, uh, you know, it goes two stories above ground level. The windows are a lot larger <laughs> and, you know, can it expose you very much so doc took a big risk here assuming that the guy wouldn't expect him to push into the another house and doc would get eyes and a shot on him first but it doesn't turn out that way sadly i saw him last second <sighs> yeah just up the hill from double red you're dead towards yeah yeah insta dead so i'm trying to keep a low profile i'm not trying to stick my head uh out of the windows too much i'm you know keeping a low profile by standing back on the stairway uh, and you know I'm not just standing in the window peering out super obvious I'm trying to be low-key and I am just not getting any eyes on this dude and I really don't until later on this guy turns out to be a really ratty really slippery snake so uh, he played it really really well I got to give whoever this is credit they they played extremely well in this situation they constantly were moving uh, every time they took a shot, they relocated, which is rule number one as a sniper, is if you're going to be taking shots, especially when you go loud, once you're, you know, at first he shoots suppressed, suppressor breaks, then he starts moving around so we can't pinpoint him. Uh, excellent sniper uh, tactics here from the from the our opponent. So now this is a one-on-one -on -one scenario, but the edge that I have over him is he doesn't know that yet. A lot of times in these situations, when I have a teammate that goes down and... I'm under the assumption that this person doesn't know that I'm around or that I even exist. I like to just play it really, really slow. I will post up somewhere and I will listen for them to push up to loot the body because they always want to loot that body, get that sweet, sweet loot. But I use that to my advantage and I sit in my position and I will wait for them to push and then I make a play. You know, use the element of surprise. And also something to keep in mind in the situation, we are collecting NBC gear and Doc has our entire suit we're just missing gloves <laughs> so we really want to hold on to this to this gear it's not necessarily about winning this gunfight with this guy it's more about getting doc's loot out safely so that we didn't just waste you know the past five six hours whatever it was that we spent looting for all this gear so as i described i lay low for a little while and i peer out the windows from that same little low-key angle because i hear another shot but i never see this guy so what I decided to do after a little bit of waiting is I push over to Doc's building because uh, I feel like it's safe. Maybe that guy's relocating to get another angle to make sure that there's nobody else in the building or to make sure that Doc is actually dead. Because sometimes when you snipe from a, a far enough position, 
you really can't tell if it's a death animation or you know where you hit your shot whatever the case may be this guy's probably just trying to be as conservative as possible make the right decision for himself and i'm trying to use this as an opportunity to push across to the building uh safely and secretly so that i can hold doc's body and maybe even run up and you know grab doc's bag or something and from here i just hold a little bit longer and then i get confronted with a few different problems one i am now starving and i have no food that is defrosted so this becomes a problem because i'm slowly losing health because of my starvation and two doc's body is still not looted so this forces my hand and I go up to take Doc's stuff and I get shot. Yawn. I can strip your body and get the shit off. I'll just leave. I mean, it's up to you. If you can fight this dude, try it. I haven't seen him at, at all. Hmm. I hate flight to the other hill like I thought. This time, the shot comes from the opposite hill line. Uh, closer to the train station. So this guy flanked all the way around, crafted another bottle suppressor, and then was just posted up watching the building. And I decide that this is probably not the best building to be in. So I immediately transfer over to another building and try and get eyes on this dude from another building. So my thinking here is if he's on the other side of the double blue door building, look, watching where he knows Doc is downed or dead. Uh, if I can get into another building and put, you know, the building of interest in between us uh it would give me a lot of cover and i could safely spot him because at this point i just want to spot the guy if i can spot the guy i give myself an opportunity to fight back and i haven't had that chance yet so i'm just going to be as patient as i can but knowing that the clock is ticking i'm start starving slowly and eventually as you may be able to tell uh, nighttime is approaching and with nighttime I will probably be in dark blue temperature, meaning that I will be freezing to death on top of the starvation. So it's not a good situation to be in for me. My goal is to spot this guy and, you know, get a good chance to shoot at him and try and get Doc's stuff out of there. But this guy is very patient and I'm going to have to match that patience in order to have a good chance to fight back. So then after another little bit of waiting, I, I don't spot this guy. My original plan doesn't work. But this guy never shot at me, so he never saw me change buildings either. So my idea is let's just change again without him seeing me and try and get a better angle on the hill line that I know that he's in. So I move next door to the fire station that I know has a few different windows that are facing that direction. There's a tower and there's a roof I can even go on if I can get a clear shot. So I sit and I wait in the fire station for a little bit and eventually I finally spot this guy super far away. And as I spot him, he is going on another humongously wide flank to try and get closer to the building. Once I realize that he's getting a little bit closer to the main road, I decide that I should get off of the fire station roof. And this is because I imagine he's going to try and post up somewhere at a different angle that he hasn't looked at yet, maybe on the rocks, in the trees, down the road. And with that, he'll have a really good line of sight on the fire station itself. So... My reaction is to get off the roof, slide down the ladder, and let's move up and let's counter this guy. I creep a bit closer and I get lucky and I spot this guy uh, skylining on top of the rock. And this is my opportunity. So I make sure that he doesn't see me. I get close behind cover so I can take a concealed shot and I take it. I do end up hitting the shot, uh, as you can see. But I'm not sure if it knocks him uncon or or what really happens here. Uh, especially because when I hit him, he kind of goes behind the rock again. Nonetheless, uh, in my head, I think that he's unconscious. So I'm flanking around right side, using the trees as cover to try and get an eyesight on this guy. Just in case he is unconscious and I can finish him off. In that case, the situation is over. But I end up flanking and I don't have any eyes. I'm not sure where this guy goes. I think he uses the trees uh, just above his the rocks on his hill to, as cover to either sit in or he uses them to retreat further away. Keep in mind, with the, the enhanced cold on the server, being that it is a winter version of Trenaris, I probably really forced this guy's hand. 
Uh, I probably ruined his jacket with that shot. It was just a, a chest shot, a torso shot. And with that, he's going to lose all that insulation from his jacket. But if it is, in fact, ruined, then he's also prone and exposed to frostbite. And it, frostbite is a mod that comes with the winter stuff. And with it, if you're not covering a part of your body, let's say your hands, your face, your head, or in this case, I ruined his shirt, so his torso, he could get frostbite, and that would give him, I think it's 15% less health. 15 to 25, something like that, less health. Uh, and that's obviously a big disadvantage, so I may have hit this guy and forced his hand to try and retreat and start a fire, especially with night falling. I do also try to do my best in trying to spot him and avenge Doc, get the kill, because that's, you know, always a, something that you want to do for your teammate is avenge their death. And just, you know, secure my safety in this situation. But I don't end up seeing him. Like I said, I do think at this point he retreats. And later on, I hear some wolves and an SKS shooting the wolves. I think that was probably him. It's pretty likely that I forced him to push back and try and get a fire and get warm. And, you know, just stay safe. And that's the smart decision for him. And even if it's not, I end up having to back off from the fight as well. Because I'm still starving. And now, with nighttime, I am freezing to death. So I'm in a situation where I am dying, losing health very quickly. So I switch from fight mode to kind of flight mode. I'm, I'm more focused on surviving rather than fighting this guy now. Uh, I have that idea that he's probably the one fighting the wolves and push back. So I immediately uh, push back to Doc's body, which is holding all the NBC stuff. I get there, and it seems looted, which I find weird because... Uh, you know, I kind of kept tabs on this guy, or was in Doc's building where his dead body was the whole time. And it just seems hmm. like... Would explain a lot. There was not really ever an opportunity for the guy I was fighting to go in. So either there was a second person who looted and then, you know, they decided to get out of there. Or maybe there was just a third party who came and, and ratted some loot. I don't know. But either way, the NBC stuff is still here. So I filled up Doc's backpack with all the NBC stuff so I you know, can actually carry it because it's a lot and it takes a lot of space. I eat the little bit of food that he has available for me. And now the goal is to relocate. It's a big city. Uh, I'm low health and in a bad situation, but I still want to take the time to relocate because all the shooting in, in the area, is probably going to draw some attention. So I try to get, you know, more towards the center or at least the other end of town to start a fire. So I'm at least freezing to death when I'm outside. And then I have to start looting for food. So again, pure survival mode. I take the bag, fill it with all the essential stuff like the NBC gear and the little bit of food that uh, I can defrost. And I make a fire after I relocate. I defrost the food that is edible. I eat it just to buy myself some more time. And then I go and I stash Doc's NBC stuff under a bridge. I think maybe it's not the best spot, but it's better than running around with this backpack in my hand uh, having to drop it every time to fight a zombie or, you know, maybe someone else pops up and I have to fight them. I want to be able to have a weapon in hand ready to go. So I stash the NBC gear and I continue to loot for food. Something else that I do here, I notice that my hydration is now yellow. So I don't want that to be a problem too. And I also uh, don't really have time to go out of my way to the well. But I do have a saline bag. Saline bags are good for regenning blood quickly. Uh, but they also give you quite a bit of hydration, and this buys me a lot of time, saves me a trip to the well, and I can continue looking for food. Luckily, I find food in one of these little, uh, I don't know what you call them, newspaper stands? Some people call them taco stands. Uh, they're a pretty good place to loot for food, and I get super lucky and find a jar of honey. So I take this honey, I immediately go uh, get a fire and defrost it because that is my lifesaver right there. I'm at least not going to starve right now. So I got down as far as red health in the situation because of the cold and the starvation. But I end up finding that jar of honey, sitting by a fire, getting that nice heat buff, defrosting the honey, and eating it. And there's my life. I saved it. I saved this whole run without even winning the PvP situation. And showing this was my entire intention. I want to show off the point that sometimes 
you don't have to necessarily kill everybody that you're up against in a PvP engagement to technically win. In my case, I just happen to play it very slowly and very patiently, uh, give myself an opportunity to spot the enemy and drive them away with some precise shooting. You know, I drive them away and I end up getting away with the gear that I was trying to protect in the first place. So the point is, you don't always need to be this super chatty, uh, run and gun hero every time. You don't always have to push everything. Uh, there's no shame in playing it slow and playing things patiently to get away with your life. And by making these smart decisions and knowing when to get out of an engagement because you're freezing to death or you're starving to death, or in my case, both, is valuable uh, experience and knowledge to have. This is a survival game before it is a PvP game. And sometimes you need to prioritize that survival over the PvP. I could have easily tried to push up to the guy as I heard him fighting the wolves and try and track him down to kill him, but why do that when I can go back, get the NBC gear that we worked so hard to collect, and, you know, try to make the most out of that situation and get back to Doc. But in the end, I hope you guys find this to be helpful. I thought there was a valuable lesson to be learned here in the situation that it's not all about run and gun chattiness. Sometimes some situations will require a lot of patience and using your eyes rather than just shooting your gun at everything that moves. So if you did find this helpful, again, make sure to leave a like and a comment on the video. It does really help me out. And I'd really be interested in knowing what types of situations that you guys get yourself into and maybe I can pull a clip that relates to the situation you describe and do my best to help all of you guys out. Because in the end, that is my goal here with the channel. So one last time, leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more Daisy Guide content. I also stream five days a week, Monday through Friday. So maybe stop by and check me out sometime. That'll be it for me today, guys. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.